Well, we have a lot to discuss today. Um, the uh, lesson that we're discussing is on Chapter 2, Lesson 7, Parent Functions and Transformations. So if you will take just a moment to read the content standards and the mathematical practices. These are about our translations, so these are very important. We'll be discussing more during the lesson. Previously, you've analyzed and used relations and functions. Now we're going to identify and use parent functions and describe transformations of functions. Quite a bit of new vocabulary. There are family of graphs, parent graphs, parent functions, constant function, identity function, quadratic function, a translation, reflection, a line of reflection, a dilation. So, let's begin. A family of graphs is a group of graphs that display one or more similar characteristics. The parent graph, which is the graph of the parent function, is the simplest of the graphs in a family. This is the graph that is transformed to create other members in a family of graphs. So here we have a bunch of parent functions. There are constant functions, and we've worked with these before where it says y is equal to 1 or x is equal to 2. So in this one, it doesn't matter what x is, whether x is 2 or 3 or negative 1, y is always 1. Then there's the identity function. Um, and that means that y is equal to x. So if x is 1, y is 1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Notice that gives us a linear function. And it's the parent function of most linear functions. Its domain and range are all real numbers, as we've previously discussed. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you. The domain is all real numbers. Now, the range, however, on this one consists of a single number, just y is equal to 1. Because remember, domain is x, range is y. Absolute value functions. Um, Recall that the parent function of absolute value functions is f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Absolute value functions are always of v. The domain is the set of all real numbers, so the x is not limited. And the range is the set of real numbers greater than or equal to 0. Remember, absolute value um, is just how far it is from 0, so it's not negative. And then there is the parent function of a quadratic. Quadratic means it's squared, the x is squared. The domain is the set of real numbers, and the range is the set of real numbers greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so if you need to take a moment to make a few notes, perhaps draw the graphs or make a mention the, and understanding what the domain and the range is. So we're going to identify function by the shape of the graph. So this is in what shape? It is a V, so what kind of function would that be? Yeah, it's a V shape, shape, so it's an absolute value function. Very good. Now identify the type of function represented here. Do you remember looking at that earlier? It's the shape of a U. That's a parabola. So it is a quadratic function. So this one would be Y is equal to X squared. So time for you to check your progress. What type of function is represented in this graph? So pause for a moment, read your options, and then come back and check to see your answer. You are right. It is a constant function. Good job. Okay, let's try another one. Identify the type of function represented by the graph. So pause for a moment, read your, your selections, and come back and check your answer. Oh yeah, good job. Identity function, because if you're looking at it, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. Excellent job. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about transformation. So I've added a few slides in here to help you with understanding. Um, transformations of a parent graph may appear in a different location, flip over an axis, or appear to have been stretched or compressed. The transform graph may resemble the parent graph, or it may not even resemble it by the time we finish. So a translation, that's what we're looking here. It will move the figure up, down, 
left or right. If a number is added or subtracted, that's not within the parentheses. If it's added, it's going to go up. We're, we call this k. If, if uh, k is positive, it's going to go up. If k is negative, it's going to shift down. So because this is up, notice from this parent function, it's going to start to up. Now, this one's sort of backwards. If it's inside the parentheses, if it's negative, it goes to the right. And if it's positive, it's going to go left. So that's, that's opposite of what we're used to. But if you think about setting this x minus 3 equal to 0, well, to find out what x is, you have to add 3 to both sides. So if you think about, if you set it equal to 0, what are you going to end up with? A positive 3, so positive 3 is to the right. If that was a positive 3 and you set it equal to 0, you'd have to subtract 3 from both sides, so it would be negative 3, so it would be your left. So if you remember, if it's inside the parentheses, the signs sort of go opposite of what you think of on a number line. So let's work some problems. Describe the translation in y is equal to the quantity of x plus 1 squared. Then graph the function. Okay. So first of all, the parent function, let's, let's identify what the parent function would look like. y is equal to x squared, right? So we know that's a parabola, y is equal to x squared. Now we're adding one on the inside, which means because it's inside the parentheses, we're going to go the opposite direction of what we'd think. So we're going to go left one unit, okay? Time to check your progress. Describe the translation in this function, then graph the function. So pause for a moment, work the problem, then come back and check your answer. Okay, so notice that this is a negative sign within the grouping symbol. So it's going to be the opposite. We think going left, but it's inside the grouping symbol, so it's going to go right four units. The parent function y is equal to the square root of x, so we know that we're going to have a, an absolute value function. So there's the blue is the parent function, and it's going to go to the right four units. So where the vertex previously was at origin, it's now going to be at four. Okay, let's try some more. So we have previously done a translation, now we're going to do a reflection. Now, it's going, the, the parent function will reflect across the x-axis, so if you fold the paper in half with this being the folded part, so you're going to fold this one up over this one, if it's negative on the outside, it's going to reflect across the x-axis. If it's negative on the inside, it's going to reflect across the y-axis. So you can fold the paper in half across the y, and these are reflections of each other. So describe the reflection in y is equal to the opposite of the absolute value of x. Then graph the function. Well, first of all, because the negative signs on the outside, not inside the grouping symbol, it's a reflection of the parent function y is equal to the square root of, or absolute value of x, across the x-axis. When it's on the outside, it's across the x. When it's on the inside, it's across the y. So remember that. So time to check your progress. Describe the reflection, y is equal to negative x squared, then graph the function. So pause for a moment. Okay, so we're going to reflect across the x-axis. It's the parent function, y is equal to x squared, and it's going to go across the x. Very good. You might want to put these in your notes. These are very handy for when you're getting ready to uh, work the assignment. So if it's negative f of x, it goes across the x-axis. It refle reflects across the x. f of negative x is going to reflect across the y. What you're adding on the outside of the parentheses will go, if it's positive, it's going to go up. If it's negative, it's going to go down. However, if what you're adding or subtracting is on the inside, it's going to be the opposite. If it's a minus, it's going to go to the right, and if it's a negative, it's going to go to the left. 
Now let's talk a little bit about dilations. A dilation shrinks or enlarges a figure proportionally. Okay, so if we've got a nonlinear parent function, so we're talking about quadratic and absolute value and square root, all those kind of parent functions or, or uh, uh, families of graphs. It is, if it's multiplied by a non-zero number, then the function is either stretched or compressed. Now, if coefficients are greater than 1, it's going to be stretched vertically. If the coefficient is between 0 and 1, so what kind of numbers are between 0 and 1? Yes, they'll be fractional. Then it's going to compress it vertically. So let's take a look at that. Describe the dilation on y is equal to 1 half times the absolute value of x. Then we're going to graph the function. Well, we're multiplying by a number between 0 and 1. So we're going to compress the graph vertically. Check your progress. Describe this dilation. y is equal to the absolute value of 2x. Read your selections, pause, and then come back and check your answer. Okay, so because it's being multiplied by a number greater than 1, it's going to be stretched vertically. Very good. Oh, now here we're going to just throw the whole kit and caboodle together. Look what we're doing. We're multiplying by a number between 0 and 1. We're subtracting 5, so we've got a minus h, and we're adding k. Oh my goodness. This can be used to represent a parabolic archway. Describe the transformations in the function, then graph the function. So let's break this down. First of all, because we have that negative 5, it's going to translate to the right 5 units. And because we're adding k, 12.5, it's going to go up. 12.5 units. It's uh, where the coefficient is between 0 and 1 and it's going to reflect across the x-axis and compress vertically. My goodness, a lot going on here. So now let's look at this one and describe which is not an accurate description of the transformations in this function. So pause for a moment and look at them and uh, decide which one doesn't fit. Well, before I show you the answer, I'm going to start here. The positive 4 says it's going left 4 units. That's right. I agree with that. Negative 1 fourth is going to reflect across the x-axis. That is correct. This negative 2 say is going to go down 4 units. And what they're trying to confuse you on is the difference between this positive 4. They're trying to say it goes right 4 units, but it does not. It's the opposite sign. Normally we think going right is going to go left. Good job. I'm also including the concept summary. You can find this in your textbook on page 112. But if you don't want to go search your textbook, these are very good to have in your notes for when you get ready to do your assignment. I would also let you use this information when you get ready to take a quiz or a test. So having it in your notes would be handy. Okay, you're now ready to begin the exercises. Good job.